and welcome to New Life Online Bible School and School of Ministry. My name is Osmin Grödlund and uh, the topic today is led by the Spirit. And um, to be led by the Spirit is to be in intimacy with the Lord. It is to listen to His heart, to be one with Him, and to be attuned to, to what God is doing. So, Father, I just thank you for attuning our hearts to yours so that we can listen to your Spirit, Father, to be sensitive to his la smallest inklings, Lord, that you will teach us how to, to walk, how to be bold, how to take new steps of faith, Lord, and that you will touch my brother or sister across the world and everyone who listens to this after. Attune their hearts, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we will start today about walking in the Spirit, because it's a part of being led by the Spirit. And um, if you turn with me to the um, book of Acts uh, 8, and verse um, 26. Here, uh, twenty. Oh, I was on the wrong chat. <laughs> Sorry. Now, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, "Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza." This is a desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch with great, of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah, the prophet, then the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake his chariot. So here he, you get Philip gets a command from an angel to, to go down a desert road, and there the Spirit speaks to him to go close and, and overtake his chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I, unless some, someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its sharer is silent, he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See here is water, what hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came out, up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. 
but Philip was found at Asotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So, this is Philip. The, the backstory here is Philip is preaching, and revival has broken out. And then he is redirected to go down a desert road. To be led by the Spirit does not always make sense for the natural mind. Because the Lord may ask you to do things that are a bit crazy. Um, but he, he went there in obedience to, to what the Lord put on his heart. And when he went down there, the result from this, when he just listened to the Holy Spirit and did as he was commanded, was that the gospel got an entry into Africa. This was the first time he, Philip was an evangelist and he preached and this led to one man. He left a revival for one man because there was impact through that one action of obedience. So we never know how much or what the Lord will use our acts of obedience to, or our sensitivity when we are led by the Spirit. When we draw close to Him, we suddenly hear things, and we start to walk. When I was um, in Bible school, everyone had a plan after Bible school, and I asked the Lord, what about me? Should I get a work? Get work? No, you will work for me, he said. Okay, so I waited. And everyone saw it looked like they had something to do. And then suddenly I hear from the Lord, you need to pack. Because I, I was fasting and praying. And I heard, you need to pack or else it's too late. So I just packed all my bags. And suddenly I just started vomiting blood uh, or black, uh, looked like coagulated blood. And it started to burn inside my stomach, and I was thinking, Lord, I'm dying, I'm dying, help me. So I ended up being rushed to the hospital, 14 liters of liquid in me the first 24 hours. And they told me I had diabetes. And, and I said to the Lord afterwards, I went to a conference, and I said, no, in Isaiah 53 it says, by his stripes I am healed, so I'll trust you, Lord. And I went from that conference to another where the Lord, with His Spirit, He led me in the Word to put all at the apostles' feet. So I did this. I, I gave away all my money before the conference was over. And the Lord put on hearts of people to bless me with food. And when I was sitting in, um, in the car on the way home with, uh, with a brother, five-hour car drive, the only thing I heard in my spirit was give all you own to Latvia again and again and again. And when I came home, I, the one that I drove home with in, in the car, he, he sent truckloads with furniture and things to Latvia. And when I went home, a brother from Latvia called me, and I said, okay, uh, and he said, you want to go up north? And I say, I have no money. Yeah, I'll, I'll pay. So I say, okay. So the next morning, I just gave my keys away to my apartment because everything was packed, because the Lord told me a month before, pack your bags. And, and, and I, I just said, you give away everything. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And I went away with one set of clothes on me. And in um, Matthew, Matthew 10, because knowing how to be led, led by the Spirit is sometimes the Lord says things that's not in the Bible. But you always need to ask yourself, 
Is this biblical? Does this align with the heart of God? And if you go to um, Matthew 10, 5, and to uh, verse 15, it says, These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bags, bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs for a worker as worthy of his food. Now whatever city or town you enter, inquire who is in it, who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a house, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive nor hear you your words when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. As surely I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on that day of judgment than for that city. So the Lord, he sent me out. No money, no clothes. I had the clothes on me. I did not have anything. I just went out in faith. And the Lord, first he w we went 2,600 kilometers on the back of a motorcycle. And I was up in north in uh, Norway, just outside Bude. And um, I was there for 14 days. Then he moved me down to Oslo, the main city in Norway. And I was there for three months, and I saw the Lord heal Corona. I saw him heal uh, because I was in a house, as it said there. You come into a house, and they gave me food. As long as I worked, and uh, I made food for the, um, an old lady that lived there, I, uh, they, they fed me. They got me a place to stay, even though I had no money, no income. And after three months, he moved me to another town. But th th this is life in the Spirit and, and being led by the Spirit. But it may look different for me as it does for you because we are all given according to our faith. And we are given a measure of faith. And this faith grows as we walk with the Lord. But he will never ask you to take my steps steps of faith. He will give you your own to go grow into what the Lord has for you. But if the Lord asks you to do something like this, go. You will not regret it. It will be hard. It will challenge you. But He has you. He has done this before and He keeps on doing it today. He has not changed. And um, Book of Proverbs 16, verse 9. It says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So many times on this journey, I, I ask myself, Lord, where am I? Or am I in your will? And when I look back now, I see his gentle leading. Even when I felt he did not lead me, he directed my steps. Because the Lord is sovereign. And as long as we yield to him, as long as we surrender and, and seek him, he, he will direct our paths. 
He wants to take you where you want, but uh, where he wants you to go. But there is still, um, we have free will. And it's also about sharpening our ears, learning how to listen, learning when the Lord speaks without him yelling at you. Because he, he really wants to teach you to listen. And um, in, um, in 1 Samuel, no, 1 Kings 19, verse 11. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into piece, in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After and after the fire, a sm still small voice. So, Yes, the Lord can do magnificent, big, thundering things like he, he did when he came down on the mountain with Moses. But as when you start to listen to the Lord, the closer you get to the Lord, the more gentle of a whisper you need to hear. Because your heart is attuned to him. And you, you start getting filled with the, 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 the Bible and you start hearing from the Lord more clearly. The more time you spend with Him, you, the easier will you recognize His voice. And, um, yeah. In the book of Acts, verse 9, now, uh, chapter 9, verse 10. It says, Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight. And inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priest to bind all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went on his way and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once. And he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. So here there is a faithful servant who gets a message which he really does not want because he had heard about Saul. Everything in the natural just screamed, uh-uh, I'm not doing this. But he 
was obedient to the Lord, even though it may cost him his life in, in the natural. So it, it does not always make sense for us. And um, it's sometimes it, it says to us to, to be ready, timely and untimely, when, when it fits me and when it does not fit me. Uh, when I uh, was on um, another trip, where the Lord put uh, another mission on my heart. He, he had, I went to Oslo, uh, our main city, with just a backpack. And there he, um, I was in, uh, in worship and prayer for many days, and I was so tired because I was praying from 8 in the morning until uh, f 5 in the morning, and I just slept a couple of hours every day. And when I came home from this trip after 10, 10 days, I was so worn. I only wanted to sit and relax and sleep. And I was sitting on the bus trying to mind my own business. And suddenly, I, I, I felt this smell of smoke. It smelled like burnt clutch on the bus. And I was thinking, uh, oh, this is the bus driver burning the clutch. And after a while I, I felt this hit me again. And uh, then I then I went down to the bathroom. And when I went back down to the bathroom, I saw a woman sitting with these um I don't know if you have these in your country, but vape pens. Instead of cigarettes, it's water vapor with nicotine in them. And she was and she's blowing into her sweater and you see it smoking up from the sweater. And uh, I just went to, to sit down, and I just heard the Holy Spirit say, go correct her. Go correct her. And, uh, okay. And I, I stood up, and I went, and I corrected her. And I said, would you mind not uh, steaming on the bus with this thing? And she said, oh, did you smell it? Yes, I did. And uh, then I went, and uh, I sat down again. And then I hear, just, just after, I hear, go tell her Jesus loves you. Yeah, but I just told her that, <laughs> I just corrected her, I don't want to do this. And I just hear this going again and again and again in my spirit. I was so tired. All I wanted to do be have, is to have some peace and, and sleep. And... So I, I kind of argued a bit with God. Anyone else ever done that? <laughs> or is it just me? But uh, he is persistent and he always wins and he is always correct. So when I, I went and, and um, uh, off the bus, I, I went over to her and I said, you know, I, I gave her a, a little treaty and I said, you know, Jesus loves you. And I just saw her jaw drop. And she just looked at me and said, I need to show you something. And, and she looked like she came out of uh, the New Age with piercings and, uh, uh, yeah, and, and her whole language. Uh, she has had been in the occult or something. But when, when she, um, she put, put up her phone and she showed me she was listening to a sermon. <laughs> And uh, th this led to a good conversation where I got to pray for her and, uh, and bless her. And she just saw the, the Lord's leading in this. And sometimes it's just like that. It does not always suit me when God wants to use me. Sometimes I will be tired, I will be worn, and he will ask me to do something I really do not want to do. And this is all about surrendering to him and just being obedient. In um, First Samuel, fifteen, twenty-two. It says. Has the Lord, Lord, as a great delight in 
Now, so Samuel said, has the Lord a, as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. So, obedience is better than sacrifice. It's when we obey the voice of the Lord, we grow, we mature, and we also see the Lord working in ways we did not imagine. And it, it, we really don't know the impact of what the Lord will do with our actions. It may some, sometimes it will take you where you never thought you would go. Uh, in the same, same uh, trip I told you about when I went up to Oslo, where um, I had to take the bus home, I also went to a mission conference, and the Lord branded my heart with, with um, a country and a people, or uh, the Fulani people. Uh, not the country, but, but but only the Fulani people. And I went and told uh, a friend of mine who had been a missionary in 35 years in Niger and uh, Ni Nigeria and uh, Mali, Mauritania and, and things like this. And I told him which people group I had on my heart. And he said, would you like to come to Niger? And I said, yes. And when I went home afterwards, I, I read over my dreams. And it says, I had a dream where he asked me in the dream, and I said, if the Lord sends me to Niger, I will have to learn Hausa. He said, yes, in the dream. So the Lord gave me an instruction in the dream. This is also about being led by the Spirit. So I started to learn a bit about Hausa, just uh, enough to be able to greet people and, and have a smaller conversation and um, after I, I, I traveled there and um, because I, I, I got uh, I got from the Lord to travel even though they said tourists do not travel to Niger this was in uh, in uh, February last year and um, so I, I, I traveled even though it says, do not travel. Because the Lord had sent me there. I knew a conservation in my heart. Even as when thousands of Muslims stormed the car on the freeway, hammering on the car in a language I did not understand. I was there, for, for, sent from the Lord. I knew He had sent me. And... Afterwards, we found out this was a demonstration for, uh, from students who got shot by the police 10 years ago. But you, you felt there was something boiling underneath in, in, in the people. And uh, only um, under a half year later, they had a coup in uh, Niger. And they just took the, uh, took the president and... Uh, held him captive or yeah and and they took over the country so but knowing the lord has sent you gives you a boldness it gives you the courage to go where you should would not have gone either you know and uh, it says be strong and courageous because the lord your god is with you wherever you go in Joshua 1 9 I think so have this boldness and you never know where the Lord will take you I was not expecting to be sent to Niger I, I had no idea really where the, it was on the map until just recently you know uh, but the Lord is blowing my mind where he can take me what he can use me with. 
because it's not about me, because in myself I am weak, but his, his, uh, his strength is made perfect in weakness, because then what comes out of me is from the Lord. When I have nothing left to give, it's the Lord's power that shines through. And in the um, book of Acts, book of Acts 16, verse 6 till 10. And now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. So here we see the Holy Spirit forbidding them to go somewhere. And as well, they, they got a vision to go to Macedonia. And this, this had an impact because this is where the, the, the gospel was led into Europe. And, but he, he forbade them to, to go and preach in Asia. Why? Because it was not time there yet. The harvest was not ripe. There was an appointed time for them to move in there. And there, it's so important to be attentive and listen to the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes we just want to rush on. We get something from the Word, uh, from the Lord, and we rush on. And we miss the appointed time. We miss the timing for what the Lord was, wants to do. And this is also about being led by the Spirit. You need to, to stop and listen Use time. What are you doing now, Lord? Pray into the things you get. And, and sometimes there is things like this. You, you move on because you know this is now. This is the time. Sometimes you just need to be on. And sometimes you wait. But... When you walk in the spirit, in, in the natural, uh, this is also leads to um, how the, the gifts work. Words of knowledge, um, in, in natural life, it's like sometimes you hear something. You hear someone has an illness or you feel it in your body and you have the choice just to yeah, it's probably nothing. Or then you step out and you see God move. And these are also things about being led by the Spirit because the Spirit, the Spirit of God is the one who gives the gifts. He is the one who functions in them. He is the one who trains us. And He trains us to use our senses and you have in um, Hebrews 13. Let me see here. No, he Hebrews 13, I say. Hebrews 5, 16. Right, 514. 
but solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have used their senses to have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So, what senses do we have? We have our sight, we have our ears, we have our smell, we have taste, and we have feeling. And all of these senses are attuned to the Holy Spirit. You have spiritual senses. When you became a spirit being and His Spirit entered your spirit, the Holy Spirit has access to these things. As long as he's, He gets to purify you and you start to use these, not all pain you get is your pain. If, there's, if you get pain and you, there's no logical reason why you get this pain, it might be the Holy Spirit trying to tell you something about someone you're around. Or maybe you get the vision you see some sickness, you see, and then you act on it. And when you act on this and see the Lord moving, you grow. You get more bold the next time because you know this was from God. In the um, book of Acts, Ten, verse 9. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened, and an object like a great sheet bound at four, the four corners descended to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed you must not call common. This was done three times. And the object was taken up into heaven again. Now while Peter wondered within himself what the vision which he had seen meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made, an, made inquiry for, for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason had you come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, just a man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by an holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away from them, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the following day they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. 
But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am also a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that had come together. Then he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or to go to another nation. But God had shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So what's happening here is that Peter gets the vision. And while he is pondering the meaning of the vision, some men come in. And the Holy Spirit tells him to go with them and doubt nothing. I have sent them. And, and for Jews, it, it was, they should not have company with, uh, with uh, heathens. But the, this um, vision he got, along with the, the voice, was an interpretation for Peter to recognize that this is from the Holy Spirit. God is opening the doors for the, for the Gentiles. And when he preaches, he starts to preach in, in the household of Cornelius, and the Spirit falls upon them, and they start speaking in tongues. And this is, uh, we, we really don't know the impact or the consequences of our actions when we step out in faith. He just went along with some men to a man's house. And then revival fell in that house. This was the first time the Gentiles was included in, in, in the gospel. So obedience to what the Lord tells you to, be, to do, obedience to His voice is what brings results. Yes, there also, you preach the word, you, you do what He has commanded us, but stop and listen. Listen to His Spirit. Listen when He pulls on you, when it burns in your heart, when it keeps pounding, and He just whispers into you, when you hear it repeating again and again, go on it. As long as it aligns with who God is in His Word, He will blow your mind. Oh, the Lord has so much great things for you. He wants to break you open and just fill you with Him build you up to something new in the Spirit, to be an overcomer, to be a conqueror in Christ. He will make you listen more attentively than ever. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. Then you also have another aspect. In the um, book of Psalms 132, verse 7, there's worship in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit in worship. It says in Psalms 132, verse 7, Let's go into his tabernacle. Let us worship at his footstool. So step in front of the Lord and worship. And th this is what the point of worship and praise is, to, to be led into his presence, to be blown with the wind of the Spirit till all that melts away and it's just you and the Father in the throne room. And the point is also to lead the congregation there, lead the, the, the church in front of the Father. 
so you are filled with the glory, transformed by His Spirit. In um, the book of John, book of John 4, 23, it says, but the hour is coming and is and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. So this is our calling to worship in spirit and truth, to, to walk in the spirit, to be led by the spirit, to worship in the spirit. This is our main calling as Christians, to know Him, to walk with Him, to do the Father's business. Jesus only did what the Father told him through the listening of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit only speaks what he hears. So he tells us what God wants to tell us, what, what the Godhead wants to impart to us, what he wants us to, to know. He is the intermediary who, who is connected with us and in us. And we get to listen to what's on God's heart and move on it and see miracles and amazing things happen. Hallelujah. In the book of Romans 8, 14, it says, For as many are led by as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So stepping into sonship and maturing as a son is to be able to listen to his spirit. To have attentive ears and an obedient heart to be someone the Lord can count on which he when he asks you to do something can he count on you doing it is your is your heart posture not as I want father but as you want your will be done, your kingdom come, not my kingdom. Is it about building your church or the Lord's church? It is, is it about reaching the lost or reaching my family? They may be lost as well, but am I tr using the Lord for my gains? Lord, do my will. Or, Lord, here I am, use me. These things are really important to get the right heart posture, to get the, he the heart of the Father and listening to His Spirit, to see where the Spirit moves. The Lord is close to those with a broken or contrite heart. He seeks to heal what is broken. It's not the well that need a doctor, it's the sick. He has a heart for the sick, what the world has given up. And he wants to restore. Listen into the Lord. Build after his image. Build his church as he wants it. Do not try to fill the church with the people you want. 
but fill it with the ones he wants. Ask him to fill the house. Ask him who you, he, he wants you to see. See the ones who are broken. See the ones who are bound in drugs. The ones who are sick. The ones who are poor. The ones who are troubled with all kinds of mental illnesses. Who the world has given up on. And listen to the Lord. What can I do for thee? Like Peter said, Peter and, and John said, what money or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. And the paralyzed man was, was healed. Walk in the Spirit. Trust the Lord. He will show you wonderful and amazing things. And not, we don't always, we don't always hear what we're supposed to. We can move in the flesh and, and our soulish things sometimes. Sometimes we have, are so busy. When, when, I, when we have a, have a trip to Africa soon, and I heard in my, I tried to listen from the Lord, where am I going, am I going? And I, I listened to my soul first, and I said, no, I, I'm not going because I have a, a, a wedding coming up uh, and things like this. And then my, then my wife prophesied to me and said, it's not too late, pack your bags. You're going to Uganda. Okay, so second time I realigned and I listened to the instruction. I packed my bags and the Lord opened the door. I, even though the plane's tickets was ordered, I... I got the plane tickets, all the same flights except one of them. And this was a miracle for God. Suddenly, the same price for the tickets. Because it was not me who ordained this, but the Lord had put it on me. It was His plan that I got to step into. But, you know, just have a heart seeking God. And be, it's okay to say, I missed the mark. We all do sometimes. But repent and, and search and press into the Lord. What do you want me to do now? What's the next step? Humble yourself in front of the Lord. We are, we are not perfect, any one of us. The only one who is perfect is Jesus Christ. And he lives in me. And he wants to, I want, the Lord wants to change me into him, his image, to be glorified, to be sanctified more and more. But I'm not there yet. No one of us are. So have a little grace on yourself as well. The most important thing is the heart posture to follow the Lord. They want to do His will. And when you do, He will show the path. It's okay to take a step and miss the mark sometimes. You walk out, you think the Lord has said something, you try it, it did not happen. Okay, then we listen, then we learn. And we try again. And the more you listen, the easier it gets. So this is what the Lord had put on my heart to, today, and I, I hope, really hope it, it blessed you. And if you need more resources, there is New Life Apostolic Network TV on YouTube, where lots of teachings are out, and just dive in, share it with friends and family, that they get to grow and learn from, from everything that the Lord wants to show you in these days. And we also have a New Life Online Bible School where on Facebook. Oh, Father, I just thank you for everyone that has been with us today, Lord, that you will just teach them new steps in faith, Lord, 
that you will impart faith, Lord, the gift of faith in their hearts, Lord, that you will show them, Lord, how to walk in your spirit, Lord, how to be led by your spirit, Lord, how to do amazing things, Lord, how to be in the workplace with you, Lord, and see what you're doing in the church in these days, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I just, I just lose dreams and visions upon my brothers and sisters, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a spirit of wisdom and revelation and that you open the eyes of their hearts, Lord, that they may be able to know with all the saints, Lord, the length, the depth, the width, and the breadth, Lord, and to grow up to maturity and the fullness of, Christ, of the measure of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Fill them with your glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.